Dr. Inse, who is uh, asking, uh, what direction um, do you think um, the incoming coach uh, will be going? Are we building on um, what Jose Pesero has laid down? Or we should expect something um, different, um, especially if we consider the fact that um, the AFCON 2025 is around the corner and we just talked about the 2026 FIFA World Cup. Like, yes, like I said, uh, Nigeria does not take a no for an answer. The coaches that will come in must consolidate, yes, at the, at the AFCON, we were number two. And so we should uh, aim to win the trophy uh, next year. But most importantly, I, I will talk about uh, the Kusuru-led government. It's passionate about uh, grassroots development. That is why you have the under 17 MP have league uh, for the young guys. The belief is that we, get, we, we catch them young and build on, on, on them uh, for tomorrow. Because it is important to groom them uh, for succession. There is need for succession because uh, football is about age. Uh, so now later, this group of guys, you have some of them in their 30s, getting to their 30s. They won't be okay, uh, they will not be, uh, uh, they will have the strength to, to push for that. And so that is what we're trying to do. Uh, uh, develop the, the new system, consolidate on the games uh, that the league is already having now. Most importantly, the league is uh, doing well. That's why you can have every weekend teams go away and, and, and pick points uh, from uh, away from home. It never used to be so. Never used to be so. So we, we depend on making sure the referees get it right, making sure that, uh, that the management gets it right, and making sure that even when the, the coach that we employ, I think it was an aberration to give a coach a semi final target. What about with the, what the, what's, what's wrong with within the trophy? Interesting. And then, um, Quickly, before we let you go, you are the chairman of FC1 Rocket. Um, how will you describe um, developmental football and um, uh, grassroots football in Nigeria at the moment? Are we investing enough um, as far as um, talent is concerned in the country? We're not doing enough. We're not doing enough, especially the corporate uh, organizations. They're not doing enough. You, you the, the, the uh, belly... A few people that do not operate from banks, uh, operate with the banks. And how much are the banks uh, putting in? They keep on taking our monies, they take, uh, do withdrawals, uh, they, they charge you. And what are they flying back into the corporate social responsibility? The IOCs, what are they doing? You, they can take a cue from, from what Angolans are doing. What is MTN doing? What is GLO doing? What is Ethel doing? What is Mobile doing? What is Shell, do, uh, uh, Shell doing? What are these companies doing? What is Gangote doing for football? These are my problems. The private sectors have to be involved. Government can do it alone. They need to be involved. In this aspect, they're not doing enough. Who is sponsoring the league? What is the league title? Yeah, how yeah. much is involved? For instance, for instance, Big Milk, Big Milk, how much are you doing? You give us 30 million naira for what? Where can it take us to? And so we need to, to, to drive this, government need to drive this to, 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 to corporate investors to be involved in sport development. It but, takes away crime. It but if you say young people from the street. If you say what, uh, so what for me, okay. For me, they're not doing enough. But I tell you, we try as a private investor, uh, we try our best uh, to make sure that we give these young people hope. We give them a platform to become whatever they've got at this level. It's still for them to be coming like. But there are also worries about um, what um, the return will be for those who want to invest heavily, you know, in football. I know of the CAF president, um, he owns a football club in South Africa, uh, one of the richest men in Africa, no doubt. We also indeed know that um, everyone wants to be confident that um, there is something in return for them. Um, how lucrative is also... Um, you know, investments in football in this part of the world. Um, isn't that a worry? Definitely is a worry. Definitely is a worry. Uh, you, you can't imagine carrying uh, this burden alone. <laughs> it's worrisome. Uh, but then we'll, um, we're not giving up hope because we know that there is a light uh, at, the, at the end of the top, a tunnel. So uh, we think we'll get it right sometime. We'll get it right here, but because we're not getting immediately right, 
does not mean that it's not working. It doesn't mean that we must train the talent. We have absolutely believed in Nigeria and we believe in what we're doing. I must say a very big thank you, uh, Mr. Inse, for finding out time to talk to us on the program. Um, Spot desk, even on very short notice. And then I want to wish you the very best, also with um, FC World Rocket and um, football in general in the country. I must say a very big thank you for talking to us on the program, Sports Desk. Thank you. The pleasure is mine, always. That was um, NFF board member and also chairman FC One Rocket talking to us on the program Sport Desk as far as um, uh, the position of Persia is concerned and um, the worry of investing, mm -hmm. you know, in football. Uh, in the Premier League,